Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl from Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Uh, today, I'm going to be reacting to Wake Up Call World War Fitna, what's happening in 2020. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. And without wasting time, let's get into the video. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made the heavens and earth and created the creation and who gave us faculties of hearing, seeing, perception and sensation and united us from different tribes and races to make us an ummah, one nation and gave us day and night in perfect alternation and created the sun and the moon in perpetual rotation and revealed to us the Qur'an guaranteeing its preservation and sent to us a prophet to be a paradigm of emulation and gave us our sharia to be a source of legislation and blessed us with the kalima as our solid foundation he is the king of kings on the day of judgment and resurrection may he send salat and salam upon our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the owner of the praiseworthy station glory be to him for all that is in the heavens and earth bows to him in prostration in the entire quran the main story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us between haqq and batil, between justice and injustice, between tyranny and truth, is the story of Fir'aun and Musa. And in one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a very interesting fact about this battle between good and evil, between justice and injustice. Allah says, Inna Fir'auna ala fil ardi wa ja'ala ahlaha shia'an yastadhifu ta'ifata minhum. Verily, Fir'aun was a tyrant in the earth. Fir'aun was somebody who caused fitna and fasad in the earth. How and why? He divided his own people up. And he used one group against another. And he used one group to kill the innocents, to kill the children, to kill those that did not deserve to be killed. In the case of Fir'aun, he would kill their sons and he would leave their daughters. What an evil man he was. What a person who's causing fitna and fasad, who's causing tyranny and injustice. We understand this. The next verse, what is Allah saying? And we wanted to bless those that were being persecuted. Notice. These people are being killed. And Allah is saying, we had a plan. We had a reason why we did what we did. We wanted to give manna. Nuridu anna munna ala ladina stud'ifu. We had a plan that those people who were being persecuted, we wanted to change the paradigm. And we wanted to make them the ones in charge. And we wanted to bless them. وَجَعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً فِي الْأَرْضِ And we wanted to make them the leaders in the earth after they were being persecuted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and we wanted to show Fir'aun wa Haman wa junudahum ma minhum ma kanu yahdharun. We wanted to show Fir'aun and all of his armies that that which they feared the most was actually true and that they would be punished at the hands of the people they were being persecuted. This story is of course about Musa alayhi salam. And of course we saw the end of Fir'aun and we saw what happened to the followers of Musa. And in this story, there is wisdom for us for every single persecution, for every single tyranny, for every single injustice taking place. These days we are witnessing yet another rise of injustice. It is not the first in our lifetimes, in our likelihood, it will not be the last. But we see the rise of another fascist ideology, an ideology that is Fir'aunic, Pharaonic in its essence. An ideology that separates people based upon their race as Fir'aun did. This is exactly in the Qur'an. Ja'alahum Shia. He separated them up based upon their skin color, based upon their origin. This was Fir'aunic. And it is exactly what we see now in that land of India, that ancient land, a land that many of us in this audience have biological ties with, a land that is one of the bastions of human civilization, a land that has so much history in it. And yet we now see the rise of a new strand, a strand of intolerance, of bigotry, of injustice, a strand of an ideology that is preaching the purity of one race and one 
people over another. And this is not humanity. This is not common sense and reason and logic. This is the essence of fascism. And the person that is in charge of this is following a methodology that inspired Fir'aun. This party in India, as we are aware, it is the same methodology that inspired Nazism. If you are not aware, you should learn this. The same ideology, its parent organization back in the 1920s was literally the ideology, not an exaggeration, that inspired the version of Hitler. And that is why Hitler took the swastika, which is an Indian symbol. He took it because it came from this ideology. And we see this ideology manifested in multiple movements across this globe. And I want everyone to be aware of three such movements. There are three primary movements that are having a similar ideology. And it is terrifying to see that they are on the rise. The first of them, which is what is going on in India, is the Hindutva, which is a radical strand of Hinduism. This is not mainstream Hinduism. Hindutva is a strand of Hinduism that says this land is only for one nation, one group, one ideology, and that is those who follow their version of Hinduism. By the way, their version, the same strand was the strand that assassinated Gandhi back when Gandhi was viewed to be the paragon of peace. They were the ones who assassinated Gandhi because they viewed Gandhi as being a betrayer, a traitor. Even though Gandhi was not a Muslim, he was a Hindu. But the version of Hinduism that he followed was not a version that the Hindutva liked. So that version is preaching one ideology supreme over all others. This is the first I want us to be aware of. Number two, it is of course one of the versions of, of this fascism understanding that we've been familiar with for the last 70 years. And that is of course the ideology of Zionism, which says that there's one race, one group for that land. And anyone who's not from that land does not belong there, even if they've been there for 2000 years. Hence somebody born into that version of an understanding, even if they're born in Europe or in America, they get automatic citizenship. And the people that are in that land, the Palestinians and others, whether they're Christian, whether they're Muslim, it doesn't matter. But because they're not a part of that ideology, they don't belong there. And the third strand is one that is right here, and that is white nationalism. And this is something we are seeing right now. This version of this fascism ideology, where they want to shut down the borders, they're harping on immigration, they're banning Muslims and others from coming here. This white nationalism is linked to Hindutva, and it is linked to Zionism. So don't be surprised when the leaders of all of these movements are shaking hands and cozying up because it is the same ideology even though ironically every ideology would not tolerate the others in their own land ironically the ideologies that are finding comfort and support at the dinner table in international festivals would not be comfortable eating dinner in the local neighborhoods that they live in because each one of them views the others as being false but these ideologies all preach the same version of bigotry and hatred that Fir'aun preached over 4,000 years ago. He divided his own people up into various races. One group would be the underguard. One group would be always killed, always massacred. One group would be the scapegoat. And the other group would be considered the dominant. They're the ones who are blaming everything on the other. And they're going and killing the other. And this is exactly what we are seeing in the land of India. This, the injustices in Palestine over 70 years. And unfortunately in this land as well, even though it's not that bad physically, but still, ideologically, this strand is on the rise. And dear Muslims, truth be told, the situation appears to be getting from bad to worse across this globe. Truth be told, subhanAllah, as the years go on, it seems as if things are happening. And those who study history, we are at a time frame now, which is very similar to 1915 before World War I. We ask Allah salam and afiyah. But the point is that we cannot be blind. We cannot shut our eyes. We cannot just ignore what is going on. Where this is happening, those people never thought it would happen. They never thought they would see the day where their own neighbors would come in and gang up on them, where their own peoples would come in the capital of this land of India, Delhi, which is supposed to be a bastion of civilization. It's supposed to be a land where there are police, there's government. This isn't some rural village. This is the capital. And we see what is happening in terms of ganging up, in terms of sectarianism. We do point out that this isn't just all people of one faith ganging up. There are righteous, 
just-minded people, even amongst the Sikhs and the Hindus, they are standing up and protecting. A number of them have lost their lives, protecting the honor and justice of Muslims and of their own country. And we thank them for that service and we hope more people join that. But that doesn't change the fact that these ideologies are on the rise across the globe. And what we should do as a response to all of this. First and foremost, dear brothers and sisters, do not be so complacent as to think that what is happening over there will never happen over here. How many times in the last decade have we seen these types of mini civil wars erupt out? And really it appears the world is headed in a very dangerous direction. We ask Allah's peace and salama. Never ever feel complacent that what is happening over there will not happen anywhere else. Always turn to Allah for dua. Seek refuge in Allah from fitan. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ta'awwadu billahi min al-fitan. Seek refuge in Allah from all types of fitan. What is a fitan? A fitan is a civil war. A fitan is a disaster. A fitan is groups ganging up upon each other. Oh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reminding us as a part of our rituals, we should regularly seek Refuge in Allah from all types of fitan. And our Prophet Sallallahu taught us a dua that, Oh Allah, if there's going to be a fitna, then allow me to return to you before that fitna comes amongst us. That, إِذَا أَرَدْتَ بِعِبَادِكَ فِتْنَةً فَقْبِدْنِ إِلَيْكَ غَيْرَ مَفْتُونَ To be in a fitna is a very dangerous thing. We don't want to be in a time of civil war and strife. It's a very dangerous thing. So we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We turn to Allah azza wa jal and we ask for Allah azza wa jal's protection. The second point of advice that we need to remind ourselves is that what is the purpose of a fitna? Why does Allah azza wa jal send down these fitan? Allah tells us in the Quran, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasib and Nasu and Yutraku, and Yakulu Amanna Wahum La Yuftanun, Walla Kadifatan Ladina Mikablihim, Fala Yalaman Allah Ladina Sadaku, Walla Yalaman Al Kadibin. Alif Lam Mim, did mankind think that they will be left alone? That they would not be tested? That all that Allah wanted was for them to say we believe? No, we tested the people before to see who was telling the truth and who was lying. The purpose of a fitna, The purpose of the fitna to separate the truthful from the false, to separate the righteous from the unrighteous, to show who truly believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus those who did not. So one of the main goals that we need to do, preparing ourselves for anything that might be happening is to strengthen our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, did you think you would enter Jannah like that? Do you think Jannah was for free? That all you needed to do was live a comfortable life? And very interesting video with a very, very good message because what has been shown about India is actually happening in uh, many parts of other countries. And it's very, very sad that I think my tribe, my tribe is better than these, my neighbors tribe or where they come from which doesn't make sense why are we um thinking almost superior than the other person it doesn't make sense which is this is why when when people talk about this um for example colonization these people came to divide us they told us okay you belong here okay you're richer than these people okay you're better than these people okay you're more beautiful than these people okay you'll be the lowest class but then why allow that to divide us? We should learn to look past tribe, past um, color, past just everything. Language where you come from, it doesn't matter what country you come from. We should learn to look past that and unite. The moment people unite, things flourish, communities flourish, countries flourish. But you find that people don't want to um, come together and actually do things together which is very very bad and very sad we want to engage in wars that don't make sense have you considered what could have happened if we just united would um would remove these wars out of um the equation and would be far gone in whatever we want to achieve another thing is like he said at the end of the day we have to pray to god we have to seek refuge in god so that we avoid all these situations otherwise if we're going to follow these worldly ways of dealing with things then we're bound to be doomed for life and that's going to cost us a lot